All right, thank you very much, Renee. All right, hi, everyone, my name is Anthony Landolfi, and I have been a trader for over a decade, but I have been working with people who have run the market, people who like Joe Ritchie, who actually took options from paper tickets into the electronic format and revolutionized that industry. So there's a caliber of people that uh, I've been working with, so I've got all this skill and I've put it all into a program that we're going to be showing you. And we're going to prove out some of the stuff that was actually from a prior presenter. We're going to show you exactly how and when markets are manipulated. Because to talk about it, that's right and that's 100% accurate. I'm going to show you actually where it occurs and when it occurs. And that's the software that we put together and a training program that we put together to actually give you insights that nobody else can give you. And you can actually marry up our systems with uh, other systems that you may have. So let's go into this. We're going to talk about the dark pools um, and also market strategies that they don't want you to know about. A lot of the stuff I'm going to show you is controversial. This is stuff that actually had some arguments with professional traders saying that I should not be showing this to the retail market. This is something that should only be kept in-house. Uh, I'm showing things like pinning, which is ridiculously accurate. Pinning is actually how retail is ripped off by professionals, how they set trades up, and this is how they actually pin on Wall Street. So again, the question was whether I should be sh selling this not or showing this and, and presenting this out. But uh, we'll go over a little bit about why I'm doing that and how we, you can learn and benefit from that. Uh, this is the dream. The idea is better trading with better living. Isn't that what we all want? So what's the difference? How come you place trades and they don't seem to work out? Yes, looking at charts does not always work. I look at charts as a guide. I look at the daily chart as a guide. When I want to know what the market's really doing, that's when I go into the dark pools and I start looking at institutional buying and selling. And that's the difference that makes all the difference in the world because you'll be able to find real support and resistance levels. You'll be able to find real entrance levels. You'll be able to find real points of control. A point of control is where a market actually wants so much they actually control a market. So volume is important but it's important in terms of how much overall volume on average is being traded during the day. Because you can have a lot of volume one day, but in the big, bigger scheme of things, it's not that big. So you need to really understand point of, point of control, but also market control and even stock control. So the idea here is when should you be trading? Can you just trade every single day? And there are days you shouldn't even be trading. You take the day off. And that's some of the things we're going to show you today. I'm going to give you some actual charts. We're going to actually do this live on Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to show you this a live demonstration. You guys can all come in and watch the dark pools operating, watch the hidden orders operating, and I will show you the stocks that we're looking at and show you how volume is being, mis is being taken off of the charts. And I'll show you actually in document form how they can get away with doing that. Now, to prove my point, why are accounts free? Why in the world can you open up free accounts or you know, just put in $2,000 and you can go and trade? Can you imagine walking into an operating room and there's a patient on the, you know, in, uh, out, you know, anesthesia, and they're going to give you a scalp and you're going to cut this person up and they don't expect you to have any education at all? So the reason you're allowed to come into the market without any education. They, they don't ask, they don't care. It's because the less education you have, the less real education you have, the more it's going to benefit the institutions. So Goldman Sachs doesn't want education. And what you do is you get out there and you start learning um, rumor, you start learning urban legend, urban myth about how to trade. And so you look at moving averages, you look at MACD, you look at stochastics. and you wonder why you get into a trade and all of a sudden it flips the other way. Or you think it's going to reverse and not only does it go up, but it rips to the upside. So these are the things that you need to think about when you're, when you're trading and wondering why you've been losing money in the markets. And we know, again, 98% of the 
traders, 90% of the retail traders, lose money. And it's because they don't have proper education. You know, I started learning many years ago, and we started learning again, 2008, 2009, from a, a man that actually ran Chicago Research and Trade. He was actually a market maker. So we were learning from people who were actually, let me get the, my little pointer working here, we're actually learning from people that were actually sitting on the trade floor, trading on the Amex, trading options, actually creating, creating markets for the options market. So in pricing models that are better than Black Shoals. So this is what we this is what I've learned from, and this is what our group has learned from. We actually put all this together. Uh, my most recent partner, we've been trading 30 years on the Amex, started showing me some of these things that are just amazing. And there's some things I, I still can't even show. But again, the question is, does retail deserve the information? Should we be giving this to retail? Is it going to wind up on YouTube? The stuff that I'm going to present there's a major disclaimer uh, coming on to even look to potentially even buy a program. To disclaimer saying you cannot show this on YouTube, you cannot steal the information because it's we have to protect it. I'm just going to give you some of these top level stuff, some of this high level stuff that even Carl Icahn does, and I'm going to show you in a couple of slides here. Reveal one of his methods that he uses, and it's it's so in your face until you actually see it uh, on CNBC. But what you do is uh, we start off with the idea here. We use a simple example, simple idea to explain how manipulation works. It's not about intelligence. It's about having the right information. So imagine Albert Einstein is at a new college he's never been to before. Doesn't know the layout. And he wants to go to the bathroom. So he says, hey, which way to the men's room? And somebody wants to play a trick on him. So they say, okay, Al, what you do is you go down the hall, you make a left, you make another left, and you'll wind up at the men's room. So he takes him at his word, he goes down the hall, makes a left, makes another left, and winds up at the ladies' room. Now, is this a function of intelligence? No, it has nothing to do with intelligence. And I know you feel that way when you get into a trade, and all of a sudden the market flips the other way. You go, God, that was a stupid move. What happened? It's not a matter of intelligence. You didn't have the right information. They did not present the right information on the charts. Okay, volume that should have been there was not there. So you're left with uh, a trade and a loss. You thought it was going to go that way. You looked at moving averages. That's why moving averages, MACD stochastics, we don't use them. I use moving averages, again, as a guide. And also, since this world is globalized, other markets, live charts from other markets, and we'll show you exactly what those are in the training. Other markets will actually give a guide to what's actually going to happen in our market because they're all tied together now. This is not like it was 100, 200, 300 years ago where a city in China burns and maybe you, you hear about it a month or two months later. Everything's tied together. They can instantaneously make a change in the European market and you will absolutely feel it in our markets. We'll make a change here. Obviously, we had an election. You saw what happened with the with the markets, we went down 5%. So everything's connected. And, and the worst thing is to have somebody like a Carl Icahn, who on one hand I respect as a trader, uh, I respect what he's done. On the other hand, uh, when he comes out and talks his book on CNBC, that does not help you. And I'm going to give you what that, what that is. If you go back to um, October of last year, Carl Icahn came out on TV. He was talking about Apple. And he said, the market's going down, the market's going down, the market's going down. And we laughed about it. We were actually sitting in our, our office, and the market ripped up 12 to 13%. The market, not just the stock, but the entire market ripped up 12 to 13% in about a month. Now, our professional traders were all talking in our chat rooms and everything. That stuff, that would take normally in the olden days, in the 80s, 90s, that would take months to happen. With electronic trading, computerized trading, things that used to take months are now taking weeks or even days. And I'm going to show you some things that actually happened with Amazon, again, over the 
election time and over the last week. We're not going back 10 years or five years or four years. We're going to go back and I'm taking examples, dark pool activity, hidden volume activity from last week, this week. So he says, okay, it's going down, great, and the market rips back up. It comes back down again. This was back in April. I think the date was April 15th or April 27th. He said again, yet again, the market's going to go to the downside. This is called talking his book, okay? What he's doing is he gets on TV and says it's going down so he can actually uh, actually start to buy up any shorts that actually come in and actually take them long. And that's what he did in this area. And what happened now? Well, the market's hit all times highs again. I thought we were going down. So this is a tactic that's used by these people to actually pull in, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, billions. I mean, he made, what's interesting is after he made this claim that the market was going down in October and made some money here, you know what he actually did? He actually bought, he actually bought the Trump Taj Mahal a few months later because we did a we did a little presentation down at the Trump Taj Mahal in February and he had actually purchased it December January I guess he gave himself a Christmas present so that's kind of the stuff that happens now electronically it's even more divisive it's even more cunning and that's what we're going to be showing you in these in the screens here in the screenshots and tomorrow so hours of analysis you could spend a lot of uh, time looking at charts, screening out stocks, and that's not really going to help very much. What's going to really and truly help is when you understand and know where large institutional orders have been placed. You know, not just level two, but where the, the big money, we're talking hundreds of millions, billions of dollars are placed in the market because that's going to affect everything. Um, some people, some of my students would say, well, can I trade this little stock or that little stock? Well, what you want to do is you want to actually focus on stocks that are a part of the biggest market. So Netflix, Amazon, Google, yes, they're more expensive. They're expensive for a reason. Uh, Apple is still good. Apple will follow the market. The Qs, I like to trade the Qs. We like to trade the Spiders. And, of course, the ES, the NASDAQ, if you want to trade futures. So this will work with futures. This will work with equities. But you don't need to spend a lot of time uh, understanding or, or figuring out based on a chart level what's actually happening because charts, a moving average does not move a price. Goldman Sachs is not buying and selling because of moving averages. You're led to believe that. Again, this is retail knowledge versus insider knowledge. What moves the market is where do they put the money? If they shorted the market, you can almost bet that the next day they're going to run the market up to make it look like it's going up, and then they're going to come right back down to that point of control, slam the market down. And that's actually what happened September 6th. And I'll show you that on, on Amazon. And the whole market followed. So it didn't matter whether you were in the ES or the NASDAQ or Amazon or Apple. Everything went that way. So you can go back and look at a chart on anything. Caterpillar, name your, name your stock. And this is where you're going to get one, two percent, three percent movements on stock. In some cases for Apple, for example, or Amazon over the last couple of days, it ran up 20, 30 points. Okay, Trade rooms. Uh, I don't necessarily believe in trade rooms. Uh, we don't run trade rooms because you need to be an expert. You, sh you can't really sit back and wait for a signal to come to you and go, okay, somebody's going to bark out a signal, okay, take this trade. By the time you get it, it's a, it's a delayed reaction, and you're going to be missing a trade. You have to know when to enter, and you have to know when to protect, and how to protect your trades, and that needs to be you. You need to become the expert, okay? Don't cut any corners in this business. This is a professional business. As I said, you know, you can't just walk into an operating room and, and, uh, and perform an operation, but they'll let you trade the stock market. Uh, you need to really understand it and get to, get professional level education in order to make it in this business. Okay, and here's one of the reasons why. If you take a look at what's actually happening with the dark pools here. This represents dark pools off exchange. And this is the NASDAQ, BATS, all the others. 
Okay. Here's where their trades are sitting, about 25, 20%, and 30%, over 35 now, 40% and rising are of those trades are actually coming off dark pools. You can't into dark pools, you can't see them. They're not being listed on level two. They're not being listed on the market. You can't see them. You'll see them after the fact. And again, this is happening um, in levels of time periods of minutes to in some cases hours and in some cases overnight into the next day where they don't actually put that on the chart. They may do millions and millions of shares, tens of millions of shares in the case of NASDAQ, in the case of Amazon. Nothing shows up on the charts, on a daily chart or intraday, but then the next day all of a sudden you'll see all the volume. Because what they're doing now is dumping positions back onto the market and they want you to see the volume. When they want you to see the volume, guys, it's too late. It's going to let you know that. When you actually are now seeing volume, big volume, it's too late. They were already in. All right. And you'll see that on Monday and Tuesday. I know it's so much easier to talk about it uh, than demonstrate it. We're going to be demonstrating it tomorrow because demonstration it puts everything else to sleep, puts everything else to bed. All right. You'll see it on Monday and Tuesday. Then you get the big reveal. So they hit all these orders, and now they show them. Okay, here's a perfect example. This is a screenshot of Amazon. Okay, Amazon. We captured 154 million shares. 154 million shares of Amazon, and it was at. It would be tough to see this, but it was at 1:35 p.m on August 10th. Can anybody tell me what actually happened on August 11th? Oh, by the way, let me show you what actually happened at 4 o'clock. That was there. Now, now you're looking at these other volumes over here. This is normal daily volume here. Completely dwarfed. Okay, completely dwarfed. That one volume completely dwarfed all the other volumes. The NASDAQ was actually ringing right around 1.30, 2 o'clock because they saw this large orders come in and they started preparing for a short for the next day. Okay, So then you look at, the you look at what happened in the afternoon here as we move into 4 o'clock. This screenshot was actually taken at 6.50 at night. I went back and looked for the volume. The volume is gone. So the volume was there, then the volume's gone. What happened at night? Alphabet News came out. They announced that Google, Google, Goog are going to be under one umbrella, Alphabet. And what happened with Google? Google gapped up, I think it was 25, 30 points. Okay. Now, when you start to see this activity, you know you can actually trade this, especially intraday. Overnight trading may be a little more difficult, but you can actually find points of control with large dark pool orders. Mark those points of control when you break them. No matter what the moving averages say, you got to go with the direction of the, the large orders. But that's the kind of stuff that actually gets played. And that's why it's difficult to, to trade this market. It's not that it's difficult to look at moving averages. It's just that you get averages crossed over all day long. Okay. Now let me give you a recent example. This is Amazon. We're going back now to the 14th and the 15th and the 16th and up to yesterday. I challenge anybody to take a look at the charts on a daily basis and find me, find 300 million, 300 million shares and we will show you how to find this because it's critical. It's the first step in understanding where a market's going to go, where a stock's going to go. Doesn't matter what it is. I don't care, again, I don't care if you're looking at level two or whatever. If you don't know that there's 300 million or $222 billion sitting right here, uh, you could, you're, you're going to get killed. Even if you're using protection, now it's good to use protection. I recommend you use protection in your trades. But understanding how the market behaves, the first step is do a big order. Next step, send the market the other way or send the stock the other way to make everyone think it's going down. Okay? And the next step is 
where all these institutional orders are, run it back up through there and kill everybody else that was going short. Now, if you understand all of this, not only can you be on the right side of the trade, but you're going to be taking less losses even if you're scaling back on a trade that you're gonna, you think is going to go up. You'll know when to get in. You'll wait for bottoms correctly, getting into those bottoms, and then letting them ride to the upside. This was a huge, huge move going uh, into Friday. Okay, huge. But it did not begin with moving averages because you can bet on this day. What do you think the moving averages were, down or up, on that big red day? They were all down. Okay. And, but looking at this $300 million, or 300 million shares actually sitting out here, $222 billion, we know that we were going to at least come back up to that point of control. And of course, we ripped through it. Okay. But everyone looking at the moving averages here, they're all thinking down. And even if they use protective measures, they're going to get stopped out. And then they're going to be waiting. Well, what's the real direction? Maybe we're going to go down tomorrow. So now they're waiting on this day to go down. Well, it doesn't. Now it rips back up through here, rips, rips, and never looks back. And that's the advantage of looking at the dark pools. Okay. We are the originators. We're the first person that people to actually bring this out. Uh, we started about, about a year and a half ago um, bringing out this knowledge. Again, this is stuff that controversial is whether we should be bringing it out or not, telling retail about it, again, because everyone's worried about it showing up on YouTube. Uh, so we've, we've taken care of that process, but this is the kind of stuff that you need to understand. And this does not just happen for daily charts. This is something you can use intraday. Most of the trading, or all the trading at this point now, being controlled by computers, being controlled by algorithms. Okay, With those algorithms, they know exactly where your positions are. They know exactly uh, where retail is sitting because they know they can tell the difference between a retail trade order and you know a Goldman Sachs purchase. You think retail's putting in 300 million shares? No, come on. You know that. So they know the difference. So once they're done wiping out retail, then they just go and send it the other way, and that's what they did on this on this day on the 14th. So let's take a look at something that's intraday, something you can actually use. This is a screenshot from the 28th. Okay, October 31st uh, was a big day as well. It was a very big day. So if you're looking at this chart, here I'm going to show you the patterning. This is, this is the actual patterning that they use. These orders are hidden, and I'm going to show you those hidden orders Monday and Tuesday. Again, for those that are just getting on, Monday and Tuesday, we're doing a live trading you're going to be seeing this live. We're going to show you hidden orders live. We're going to tell you when the hidden orders have come in. We're going to tell you the stock that we're looking at. Okay, we're going to trade. We trade like the ES, Nasdaq, SPY, and we're going to give you an opportunity on Monday and Tuesday to make money. That's the opportunity. You're going to get the money. You're going to get the chance on Monday, Tuesday, to use our systems to make money. We're just going to call out the market for you. If you want to do it on paper, you can do it on paper. But we're going to show you the patterning, and you'll see it actually set up. So what happens first is, the first step is you get a hidden order, or two. Then you'll get another hidden order. Then what actually happens is, they'll take out, this is when stop losses occur, when they take out stops. This is when they run the stops. How do I know they're not just going to keep going? Well, if there are no hidden orders, there's more of a likelihood that they're going to continue to move to the upside. Look at all the moving averages. The moving averages that we use just for this example are 14 moving average. Typical. I mean, you might, you know, most people are using 10s or 20s or whatever. We're just picking something in the middle just to give a demonstration. But this is what will actually happen. You'll get hidden orders. After those hidden orders are placed, they're going to run the market the wrong way. Remember I said they do all their buying. Then they run the market the wrong way to take out stops. Then they run it the real way. Now, I don't care if you're looking at Elliott Wave or you're looking at three waves or four waves. Or, it, it doesn't matter. What actually has to matter is, did they hide orders? Because this does not happen every single day. 
when they hide orders, that is a computer signal that they're ready to move in a big way. They're ready to move in a big direction. It's a signal. If they're continuously showing orders, and I'll show you our indicator, if our indicator is lining up with what they're actually doing on your charts and displaying on your charts, there's no trade that day. Okay? If they start to hide orders like they did on Friday, they hit a lot on Friday, tons of hidden orders on Friday. So Monday and Tuesday are going to be a heck of a uh, good day. Those two days should be good. So make sure you're on. But first move is the fake out. Then they run. But these orders, as I said, have to be hidden. They have to be hidden. Okay. Now, this is the ES, so you're looking at uh, either taking trades based on this point of, this is actually the real point of control, guys. And they call it the point of control because it's controlling the market at that point. Nobody else has anything like this. There's no other program out there that's actually finding hidden orders like this. They, they can talk about order flow and institutional flow, but if they're not able to filter out hidden orders from orders that are being shown on your screen, it won't make any difference. And that's why people who use some of these other programs, they're not making any money. So give me an opportunity on Monday. So that's just one screenshot here. Okay. And this is the program that we're using. But you'll see, if you go back here on the 15th, what they'll do, again, there's the patterning. Okay. You get your hidden orders, and then whichever way they take out, when they, do, they run stops, they're going to run stops, they're going to run the other way, in a strong direction. So go look at your charts on the 15th and you'll see how much uh, that actually ran. I think I actually have a screenshot for Google on this. For yes, the 15th. So um, that's the ES. You can see on the 15th right here. This is the spiders. So from 12.30 it took out the stops and ran. Well, the only reason we know they took out the stops and we're going to run to the opposite direction, and you can't see it on this screen, but those orders happened over lunchtime. This was 1 o'clock, and then we ran up even harder into the afternoon. Okay, They first hide the orders. Now, there was no hidden orders here. You'll see this. Uh, there's no displayed orders here, but those orders were hidden orders, and you'll see that tomorrow because we're going to show you chart by chart hidden orders. I think I have a screenshot in this presentation of actual hidden orders. Okay, Now this is the 18th. This was yesterday. Same thing. Hidden orders. They run the market up to the other, the other direction. They come back down to what would be essentially what they call a point of control because they control the market at that point. And the ES ran down to I think 76 or 74. Take a quick look from yesterday. Um, yeah, ran down, I'm sorry, ran down to 77. So it came right down to about here, stopped and turned around. And at that point, more hidden orders started to come in to send it the other way. Okay. There's nothing like this. I mean, this is, this is what really makes the market move. This is really uh, the secrets of figuring out real direction. And again, you can combine this with other programs. But without this knowledge of when the markets are actually being uh, when they're actually hiding orders, it's going to be very difficult to actually trade and make any money from our experience. Now, here's an example of when they actually hit orders. This was actually on the spiders. Okay. This bar actually shows how big the volume should have been, how big the volume bar should have been at 958. This candle right here represents 2.3 million shares. So that's how big it, that's how big 2.3 million shares is on these charts. This is the think or swim charts. Okay. At 958, there was 5 million, 5.3 million shares. This is how big the volume bar should have been. Okay. Now what they did is they ran this back up. Here's your volume right here. They ran this back up, took stops. And then the next day they started to run it back down. This is the 12th into the 13th. This is a big move. So you'll see that that's the pattern that they use when they hide those orders. Uh, I believe also 
I don't think I have that marked, but there were some also some hidden orders here as well. So sometimes they'll do it big order here and a smaller hidden order up here, run it back down, run it up, take stops, and run the other way. Okay, And that's typically what they'll do. That is how they operate. How can they get away with this? Well, this is from the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. This is the CBOE Series 56 test. And this is showing how they can get away with doing this. The requirements for order display shall not apply to any customer limit order. That's a block size order. What does that mean? A block size order is anything over 10,000 shares or $200,000. Raise your hands if you put in $200,000 on a trade on Friday or Thursday. All right? That's reserved for people who are millionaires, okay? People who know people, you know, insider trading and things like that. They know they're going to put a lot of money onto something. They're going to do more than 10,000 shares. Anything over that, it's not automatically put on the charts. They can put it on the charts. They can show it onto your retail screen. But that's only when they want you to see it. They want you to see big volume after they're already in. Other than that, they hide it. They hide the orders. It's when they're hiding the orders, this is when we're looking to make the trades. This is when we're starting to position ourselves with the institutions, not after they've already moved. Because what will happen is, once you start seeing big volume on your screens, and you can go back and look at your own charts, but once you start to see the big volume, it's too late. Usually anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, the trade's over and you wind up dojing. You get up and then the market will just do go sideways. And you'll wind up with a hockey stick. So you have to be in back here. You have to be in before the orders actually get displayed on the charts. And that's what we're doing. And that's what we're going to show you how to do. We'll show you how to see it on Thinkorswim's platform. We're going to show you how to use our indicator that filters out and looks for and compares market orders that you're seeing on your chart with what we're actually collecting. We're actually collecting the hidden orders. We will actually see what you're not seeing. Okay. Now this is a screenshot, meet the market makers. Guys, it's over. You are no longer dealing with an individual. The only place that's not um, having hidden orders, the only place that really doesn't have dark pools is going to be in the options chain. And there are specific reasons for that, but the options chain is not going to be um, hiding orders. And we're developing a program right now to actually filter all that out and look for direction based on what we call stock control or market control. But anything else, futures, equities, it's all, it's all this stuff is being run by algorithms. Okay. So the good thing is, the good news on this, is that computers operate in specific patterns. They do operate in specific patterns. Now part of the patterning is not showing retail screens or level two data. <laughs> As I showed you, this is proof. They don't have to show it on level two either. It doesn't have to show up anywhere. They just take it off market. Okay? So you have to be able to capture that data to know whether you're really looking at a real move or a fake move. Okay. And this is an example of our tool. This is the dark pool volume analysis. It goes throughout the day and will reveal orders that are synced up with the market, but most importantly, it will also reveal orders that are left out of your retail screens. And that is critical. As I said, that's when the that's when the real magic happens. Okay. As I said, I don't know who you've been following, uh, but if they're not getting this level of knowledge, this this kind of in-depth institutional level knowledge, you're probably not going to succeed. And again, one of the reasons I I joined with these this these group here, this program, is because I, I took a couple of and looked at some of their presentations that they did. And it's a good group of people here. 
Um, so I want to make sure that you guys have had the advantage, the ability to potentially take our training, learn how markets really work. Uh, let me give you an example. Do you guys know what talking the book is? Well, yeah, you know about it now. I told you. How about turn around Tuesday? How about fake them out Friday? There's a more vulgar term for that. Do you know when that occurs? How do you know when mutual fund inflows occur? All of this stuff affects the market. So I showed you talk in the book. How about how to find market pinning? Real market pinning. I actually saw some stuff on YouTube and it's wrong. Okay, They don't show exactly how to find where a market will pin. And you can see the pinning every day. So these are the things that you're learning. You're learning institutional trading floor level knowledge. Okay, what indicators can you really use and rely on? Okay, besides just moving averages as a guide, are there indicators that the market would use, but that computers use in their algorithms? And there are, and we're going to show you those indicators that you can use. You can get them on ThinkOrSwim. Uh, Ninja Trader. I know we have some people that are on Ninja Trader. They don't have these indicators yet. So I have to work with the developer to actually get them produced on NinjaTrader so you can actually use them on that platform. Okay. How about trading options expiration? Is there a technique for trading the third week of the month? And and, and you can trade other stocks or equities with with that, or the Qs or the SPY. There are techniques to be, to be used, institutional level techniques. So that's, you know, again, this is the crux of what we're doing. It's, it's, we're not going into, I don't have fancy screenshots or anything like that. We're very, very down to earth, very real, very practical. Um, let's see whether any of the screenshots in here. For you guys, you have to be willing to learn and willing to accept change. Uh, this is different information. This is going to be different than anything you've ever learned before. Make a guarantee, 100% guarantee, you've never heard this information before. Many of you are probably just thinking Carl Icahn has nothing better to do than get on TV and talk about what the market's doing. You know? And now you know, oh, he's talking his book. If you notice now, now you'll now you're sensitive, now you're sensitized to the information. The next time you see Carl Icahn on TV, and he says he says the market's going up, you might trade to the downside. You might start setting up trades to the downside. Uh, next time he says, well, the market's going to go down, you know, I'm short my positions, I'm short my book. Okay, so you'll start to see that this is something that uh, you can actually, that you can actually use uh, for your own trading to actually see overall where the market's going and even day by day where the market's going and even looking at uh, on a intraday basis what the market's actually doing. So that's going to be it. Again, the, the biggest thing here is going to be proving it out. So on Monday, Tuesday, I invite you guys to come out to our website here. Um, bring this out here. Come out to our website. Go back here. TMStrategies.com. And you can click on the TMS special link, and you'll be able to uh, take a look at and click the link to get on our, our screen on Monday and Tuesday and watch us actually trading live. Okay. Okay. So that's it guys. If you have any questions, you all, I'll sit and answer any questions that you may have. If I can see the questions, Renee, I don't know if I can actually see the questions. But um, thank you, Renee. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's the TMS special. And the link for TMS special page. It's going to be on the home page as well. Okay, so thank you. And if you have any questions, I'll answer any questions. Um, I did just make you an organizer. Sorry, I didn't realize you could not see the questions before, but you should be able to see them now. Okay, so how can you see orders placed during 
after hours trading? Are these orders mostly placed during after hours? Um, what will happen is after the First of all, you have some orders placed during the market hours. Can you see orders after hours? And the answer is yes. I'll show you where. I can't actually show you how to actually see the orders without telling you how to actually find the orders. Uh, this is not information that you want to give away for free. So so what you want to do is um, I'll, sh I'll talk about them on Monday and Tuesday and show you where the levels are. But what they'll do is, after the market's order, it's actually called order imbalances. So after the market closes, they're going to actually start posting or even bringing in new orders. And this is going to be an order imbalance. So anything they did during the day, any orders they set up during the day, they will start to post them after hours. Now by 7.30 p.m. Wall Street time, 7.30 p.m. Wall Street time, they will actually have either orders paired off which means they're not holding, or they will have positions that they're holding ready for the next day. So those orders that you saw, if you go back to, um, if you go back to here, these are orders that were actually held and posted until seven, some seven thirty from that previous night, and then you can actually look at those orders and then make trades based on those orders. Now there's another screen I'll show you over here. Okay, this was on the sixth. Okay, looked like it was going up. You can put all your you can put all your moving averages on there. I swear to God, it's going to look like it's going up. Okay, we have the audio back now. I have a question here. We lost audio. Okay, um, so right here, swear to God, huge huge orders. This was in the area of 130 million for Amazon. They came back down through that point of control. The whole market came down. Now, again, I don't care what you're looking at. It doesn't matter whether you look at the spiders, the Qs, the ES, the NASDAQ. You can trade just about anything. Just don't pick a $5 oddball stock and expect it to work. Netflix came down. I mean, you can go through any charts on this. Okay? So you go back and look at the sixth. You can look at uh, the ES. Okay? On the sixth. Okay, so six. All right. So then you got a couple of days and they ran it to the downside. You know, stop losses aside and protecting your trades and legging in and legging out of trades, all that stuff is good. But you really want to be against this Goliath move, even even with stop losses. I mean, I'll take a stop loss long and then hold these positions when you know that there's that many orders sitting out there. All right, so there's so much, and again, I'll show you how to directly see. This is this has got nothing to do with the VWAP or anything like that. Somebody's asking a question about that. This has only this has to do with actually seeing where the orders are. Part of the strategies that we're going to show you is how to actually see the techniques, the strategies about stop loss taking, moves, turnaround Tuesdays. Um, Different order, different orders that they'll place. All right, that's what you need to look at. Okay. Okay. So, any more questions? Right. So, when they say 3:50 p.m. on CNBC, there's an imbalance of buy side. What they're talking about is the market on closed orders. That's a little different than the dark pools. Okay? When they talk about at um, usually it's like 3:30, 3:15, they're going to start showing market on closed orders. And that's where market makers and the market is actually advertising positions that are open that they need to get closed and filled. And you'll see that. Uh, I think Thinkorswim has something called um, trader alert or something like that. Well, you'll actually be able to see, oh, well, I've got, they're advertising half a, half a million shares or two million shares or 50 million shares or whatever for sale for Apple to go long or whatever. That's different than what happens after market hours. 
completely different. Okay, that's not this. That is not this. Okay, I probably like I said, guys. The good news is there are programs out there, uh, and then you have this program that this is going to really show you something that's state of the art, and it's something that again they use on trading floors. Okay, uh, even this stuff that I'm showing you right now, it's actually so new, a new way to actually see it. Even my 30-year veteran, I'm actually showing this and proving this out to him because the goal is you have to make money with a system before they even listen to it. So I'm building up and making over the last many months, putting together the program, showing him actually how this works. And you know, the, the programs I've developed are being used by 30-year veterans. So this kind of stuff is going to be put into an indicator itself so that it's a quick reference rather than having to dig in and, and do all the research. Quick reference to actually get the information. Uh, wait till you see our disclaimer. <laughs> Should I be exposing their secrets? Wait till you see our dis disclaimer. This is not, this is not going to be, um, I want to protect the data. Do we, I want to protect the information. How do you protect the information? You charge a lot for the course. That's, that's, that filters out a lot of people. Okay, if you're really serious, you pay the money for the information. People who are not serious, they won't pay the money for the information. That's kind of how we filter. Okay, and there's also a disclaimer that this is not going to be shared on YouTube. Um, when you go to the TMS special web page, you're going to see just to just to even look at the programs that you can't even see pricing. Just to look at it before you even get to it, you have to click OK saying you're not going to be sharing this stuff on YouTube. So why am I broadcasting it on a Saturday? Well, I'm letting people know about it. I'm giving you guys a fighting chance. Okay, I'm giving you guys a fighting chance at this.